Um, I'm very pleased to present the 2019 uh, budget uh, for your consideration um, for adoption tonight. A overview of the process, this is a year-round uh, process, especially for uh, Fran and I, um, you know, working on the budget, looking out um, over the years and kind of projecting five years out where we're going to be, and um, especially on capital projects, having uh, that, and then, you know, when we look at the budget that uh, we're not just looking at one year, but we're looking at the impact that the budget will have uh, for future years also, making sure that we continue with the township model of being fiscally responsible and, and have been, as you know, for, for decades. Um, really have to give a lot of thanks to my department heads. Um, they are tasked each October to start working on the budgets, uh, especially on the operating budgets and the capital budgets, and then bringing forth those uh, to us in November. Um, Fran and I work with them to bring everything together. Um, so that we can bring it then to the standing, standing committees or the township committee for their review. So again, Herculean work on all of them and then the township committee, each taking you know pieces of it through their standing committees for those reviews that we do in December and January. And from that point on, um, really becomes the nitty gritty with the finance committee with uh, Mayor Grazel and Mr. Mancuso there and taking all the different components and putting it together, looking at what our revenue sources are, what our appropriations are, what our statutory requirements are, where we're going to have shortages, where we might be able to find additional revenue um, to do that. So um, it's very important on the Finance Committee to, to do that. Um, and as we bring it together, we certainly look for our expertise from our auditors, uh, O'Connor Davies and Mr. McNerney and Mr. Gannon. Um, to help guide us in preparing the final document um, that was presented to you back in March uh, for consideration and then tonight having the public hearing and uh, the vote for the adoption of the 2019 municipal budget. And so we are, you know, always have had the motto of being fiscally responsible. We've always come in uh, at very low, sometimes a half a percent increase. Um, Sometimes we're coming in flat, other times we've had some decreases, but uh, especially over the past 10 years of coming in with very, very responsible budgets, as did um, all of the budgets that came in uh, through the 2000s and the 1990s, of uh, making sure that every taxpayer penny is accounted for and that it is appropriately spent. We're always looking on to maintain increased services um, for our residents as to what we can do you know, similar to the automated trash system that we put into effect about five years ago and we're going to be finishing up this year, enhancing different services, our recreation facilities that Morris Township is known for um, as part of our budget process and doing uh, the most we can for our residents as our number one priority. Um, with that, we also look to strengthen and maintain our infrastructure. Um, that includes all of our roads and, and having a very robust a repaving program and then also uh, looking for funds for certain roads being reconstruction and also going out for grants um, similar to what we're going out for and receive this year for Washington Valley Road $550,000 <coughs> half the cost of that project in previous years um, getting grants for Picatinny Road, Bailey Hollow Road um, every year finding a project that we can apply for a grant and hopefully receive that from the New Jersey Department of Transportation. And the other last thing that we've done in really looking to make sure that our cybersecurity is as tight as it can. We are constantly being attacked with ransomware. Um, people trying to get into um, our firewalls to obtain our information. Um, we have a very good IT. We're being very proactive in that way. We brought in consultants to help us. Our IT guys are great engineers and are kind of our consultants, I kind of look as our architects and making sure that everything works together, but also being there for um, when we have these attacks and assisting us uh, so that we can prevent them uh, from taking any of our data. Um, and it's been very successful. As I said we're constantly being battling uh, ransomware um, and other attacks coming into the system. Um, and we want to protect our data and our taxpayers' information um, along with all of our municipal records. So, um, it's worked out very well, but we, thanks to the Tax Committee, have put a lot of money into that effort 
and it has certainly paid off over the last several years. Chris, I have one comment to that. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, Chris, you speak into the microphone? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, last week when I, I met with Mr. Quinn and he kind of just went through it, he just went through and described the cybersecurity uh, practices and procedures that you guys have in place in, in, in the township. Uh, I was kind of struck because, you know, that is a very forward thinking and uh, ahead of the curve type process that's in place that we don't actually see in a lot of government entities. Uh, so I, I really, you know, applaud the government body and administration uh, for having, you know, IT security is a very uh, serious emerging issue. It's, it's been a problem, but it's, it's, it's continuing to be a big issue. Um, and the fact that you guys are proactive enough to put those controls in place, safeguard employee data, safeguard taxpayer data, uh, that really speaks to uh, the entity's, you know, uh, approach to making sure there's strong internal controls throughout the organization. So. Thank you. As with most years, every year we have we have budget challenges, um, and you know certainly things that that we have some control over, some things that we are mandated by the state, and then trying to bring that in so that um, we're within the two percent tax levy cap, but more importantly that we're not coming anywhere near that two percent tax levy cap and looking at things. Um, this year's challenges, you know, again our employee costs. We have 170 full-time employees that run the township and. We have another 25 or so part-timers, and then certainly our summer staff for our pools and our recreation program. So, um, township has always maintained that our non-union employees would get the same raises as our union employees. Uh, we've been consistently doing 2% for the last 10 years, uh, since 2011, um, for that and looking at that, but that's that's $300,000, um, just, just in that. Um, the other big cost that we have, and again, very little control over, it, is our health and our pension costs. Um, going back five, six years ago, health was going up at sometimes eight, ten percent a year, um, and it was you know a big battle for that. We had two years in a row through the state health benefits plan and our third-party administrator for our prescription plan, um, where we came in at zero percent um, for 2017 and 2018. Um, that ended this year. Um, we came in with 6.7% and 7% uh, on the prescription plan uh, for that. So again, additional funding that we had to fund for, find in the budget uh, to make this all work. Uh, pensions went up for the public employees. Pensions went up 5% this year. And our public employee pensions for, I'm sorry, our police and fire pensions went up 12%. Um, so again, another fairly big number um, in our in our budget and finding that additional $235,000 uh, towards that. Um, the other thing we look at is our very robust capital funding project. We have, as you know, a number of recreation facilities. We have 125 miles of roadway, um, a number of structures with five firehouses, municipal buildings, sewer treatment plants um, that all need to be upkept uh, so they're, op they're operating uh, on an optimal performance and having the funding there to maintain those um, before they get into disrepair and then costing big dollars. So doing the little repairs that need to be done to avoid the huge repairs. And then moving forward on, again, road reconstruction, road repaving, and bringing those, updating our uh, recreation facilities are the, the primary drivers, along with equipment for like DPW um, for our capital funding project. Um, the nemesis that all municipalities have are tax appeals, um, especially commercial tax appeals, um, and making sure that it doesn't have an adverse impact on our residents. Uh, the plan that we began back in 2011 was starting to put funding away for these tax appeals, so when they came to settlement that we had the funding for them without having to dip into fund balance or having to um, go out to bond and then being you know another item in the budget that we have to raise money for um, to pay off these tax appeals. As you know, although our municipal budget is 25 cents on the dollar, actually it's going to drop down to about 23 cents this year, but we're paying back 100% on those tax appeals. Um, you know, currently we have about $2 million in exposure, um, but we have, uh, with the help of 
Ms. DeAngelis uh, and our tax appeal reserve, um, if all tax appeals came to fruition tomorrow, we would be able to make that payment without having had no adverse impact on our residents. And that service um, list went out to to bond back in 2014. Again, we tax has always followed the model that we're only going to raise debt to the amount that we're going to uh, retire debt. That's about 2.6 to 2.7 per year, 2.6 2.7 million per year. Um, and again, in this budget, we have done exactly that. Um, but again, the projects that we do do is as we went out to bond in 2014, we have to go out for bond anticipation notes, which are one year interest payments. So that number goes up a little bit. And then, you know, we'll be looking in the near future to possibly go out and for bond on those projects or paying off some of that debt um, before we go to, to bond. This is the, the before, budget process. Before you, before you continue, uh, Tim, I just wanted to ask the Township Committee, um, just to let you know, if anybody has any questions while we're going through the budget presentation, um, you know, I don't mind if you interject and ask a question or two, so please feel free to do that. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Just again, a quick overview of our, our budget process, um, you know, bringing everything together in November, December, uh, Finance Committee in January, and then uh, bringing it to fruition in April. Uh, we like to do it uh, as quickly as we, as we can um, through the year so it's not lingering or operating on a temporary budget. This way we can put all the money into the budgets and then can be appropriately spent as needed um, on the recommendation of our department heads. I used to call this um, the state aid slide and Ms. DeAngelis this year added a new word to it called stagnant. Um, because it hasn't changed since 2010. Um, we used to get, um, and these are, it's, a, it's somewhat of a misnomer, it's actually the energy tax receipts um, that used to come to municipalities many, many years ago, and then the state got involved and um, they started taking the, another share out of that. Um, back in 2008, we were about 4.9 million. Um, in, coming in, that got reduced in 2009 by 500,000 and then by another million dollars in 2010 and it stayed at that just below 3.3 million um, and it's been in that number uh, since that time. We do were able to do a calculation, Mr. Andrews does a calculation for that and once we wrap in 2019, you know, over the past nine to ten years, um, we are have lost approximately fifteen million dollars that is due us in that energy tax receipts. But again, this is every municipality in, in, in New Jersey. When the governor comes out with his budget address, we're all kinds of on pins and needles as to is it going to remain stagnant or are they going to take more of it and um, it's been stagnant. So maybe next year we can change that slide. Tim? So with regard to that calculation, is that something that is in writing that each municipality is supposed to get a certain percentage of yes, those sir. receipts, but we're not getting the full. Yes, sir. It is. Yeah, there's a calculation that comes from the state that I have that, that I can give you um, that shows it's based on the consumer price index. Yeah. I'm sorry. What? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. And does the state give us their formula as to how they come up with the number that we get? No, sir. It just comes out from DCA after the governor's budget address. Um, a very large spreadsheet with every municipality listed on there and the dollar amount um, that is going to be going to the municipalities. And the, and the document or the legal uh, language as to how each municipality is supposed to receive their those receipts. Do we have a copy of that? I do not. I could check for that, but I do not have a copy of that, sir. Okay. If you don't mind, I'd like to see that. If we can okay. Hands up. Very good. Okay, let's get a report, the, the document of the, how the state. Whatever agreement from back when it first started. Uh, that. Yeah, our calculation goes back to 2001. Maybe Mr. McNerney knows if, were these coming to directly to the municipality back in the 90s? I'm not sure if they were, but it, our calculation goes back to 2001 when we. I did some started. research on it, and I, I got the impression it started in around the 70s. Yeah. Okay. So it goes back further from the 90s. 
my numbers back in like 2001, we were short like $100,000, and now we're short $1.5 million each year. Okay. Thank you. And that's just energy tax receipts. That doesn't include the, the money that the Verizon stopped giving us for the telephone no, that's utility all, as well. That's right. Correct. So there's a number of things that we've lost over the years. <coughs> that, that there, was a good, made up. there was a recent uh, ruling in the favor of municipalities out of the Hopewell case. But again, every municipality then has to go back in and try and get that money back. So, right. And Verizon stops paying. There's, there's, there was a regulation if you have more than 51% of the dial tones in your town, you had to pay utility fee uh, of, of sorts. Um, and when did they stop paying that? Seven years ago? Six years ago? Approximately. Yeah. yeah. 13, 14, somewhere right in there. And municipalities around the state have been fighting for that too. Right. Yeah, personal, personal property tax. Very good, thanks. You're welcome. As we said, um, one of the, the big dollar numbers for the township is the pension cost for all of our employees. Um, as you can see, we're you know pushing um, you know about 2.7 million dollars uh, for that, primarily through police and fire pension system, um, but also the uh, public employees retirement system. Again, we're seeing this is an assessment by the state. It's another one of those numbers you just get the bill, you don't get the reasoning. And um, our assessment this year uh, was two hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollars increase over last year. So it has to be made up in this year's budget. One of the slides that I'd like to put forward is um, is the commercial properties in the township. Um, we have roughly $835 million in rateables for our commercial properties. It's an increase this year of about $6 million. It's been fairly steady over the years, and um, you know, this is part of our strong tax base um, for the township. But and that $835 million in rateables, what percentage of the overall rateables is that? Just residential, right? It's just commercial and Most residential. So our residential is four point four billion, and our commercial is eight hundred and thirty five. Um, million, so roughly 20%. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Again, th these are on the cost of the state mandates. This is what we get that we have to deal with in every year's budget. Um, this year our state mandates are going up just under $375,000 for the budget. Um, as I said, we're seeing 44,000 public employees, 193,000 for police and fire pension system, and our group health insurance is going up approximately $136,750. Um, we'll get into a little bit more on the group health insurance because um, our employees also contribute to that as part of uh, Chapter 78 that was implemented back in 2011 and 2012 uh, to help share the cost for uh, health care. The other things that go into the budget, we're looking at our increase in revenue. Um, all of our union labor contracts have been settled uh, for 18, 19, 20, and 21. Um, when we look at our union contracts, we don't look at individuals. We look at the entire bargaining unit um, because we do have employees in steps. Um, we have some coming through the ranks. So we work with those unions, um, keeping in place 2% uh, for the entire bargaining unit. Um, it has worked out well um, to do that. Um, we were enabled for a number of years with the interest arbitration cap for police and fire at the 2% for the bargaining units. Um, unfortunately, that has expired um, and was not renewed um, by the state of New Jersey. Um, it's certainly going to make uh, future contract negotiations um, much more difficult in, in the future. Um, not having that 2%, that was really a 
nice card to have in our pocket when we were in um, negotiations with them. But we have union contracts settled for 2018, 19, 20, and 21. Again, all keeping all of the uh, bargaining use within that 2% um, cap for uh, the employees there. And as I said, some of the, when you look at the, the ordinances and everything else, they're like zero, one, one and a half, and that's because of the staff increases that are also involved. So um, you know, it's very important to maintain that and help us um, in keeping our budget numbers down. Um, again, looking at our capital projects and what we can do by going out to bond for what we retire, and then what funding do we have um, to do additional projects. Um, I had over $8 million worth of capital projects put in by our department heads, and we were able to you know, fund about $3.5 million uh, through that process. Um, we're seeing a little bit of an increase in the share of the library costs this year. Again, that deals with the equalized ratio because of a joint library um, with the town of Morristown. That equalized ratio swings from year to year. Uh, the year before last, it was in our favor, and this, this year it's gone back to Morristown for their favor. So, again, it's not a big number, but uh, there is a little bit of a share there, and it is on the tax bill a separate tax now, and has been that way for about the last eight or nine years. Um, one of the things that we're always looking at is that state aid number, um, and, and as we've seen, it's been stagnant for the last nine years, but, you know, that's always as I said, on pins and needles each year as to if there's going to be any changes to that, um, as I don't anticipate uh, seeing an increase. So before you leave that slide, oh, oh. fingers are too fast there, Brad. Yep. Um, so a couple comments. Uh, second bullet point says the expiration of the 2% cap. Um, are you set? Do you think that's going to happen by the end of this year? It did. It, it did already? It did. expire. expired at the end of 18. Okay. Toward the end of the 17, um, so it, it was not renewed by by the legislature and signed by the governor. So um, our contract came in at the last day under that, so we had it for this contract. But we're not going to see that unless something changes. Um, so the township committee has adopted several resolutions as the leading municipalities urging our state legislators to. Um, extend the 2% uh, interest arbitration cap, um, but it fell on deaf ears. It did not happen. Mm -hmm. Is the 2% cap on the municipal spending still in place? Or the levy cap? The debt, yes. yes, sir. That's still in place. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. The thing with the 2% um, the on, on the salary increases is that what, what potentially will happen is it's not just the ability to get more than 2%, it's the arbitration process that takes place. And with that comes the increased cost of litigation back and forth between the unions and the, uh, and the township. And those fees can get exceedingly high. And that really, uh, the 2%, really put a cap on that. So when, uh, uh, instead of buying arbitration, when people would go in and just realize that 2% was what you were gonna get. And, Saved, I, I'm telling you, that saved municipalities tens of millions of dollars. And then also, uh, it took a lot of work away from arbitration attorneys because uh, they really did not get that intense. So uh, that's going to be a big issue going forward. Okay, my, my second question. You got to t you're up to 2021, and that's a four year negotiated contract. Right. After this happening, it's probably the best move you could have made. Yes, sir. Uh, right. I, right. I, I, yeah, so we're locked into four-year contracts at 2%, so we don't have to go through this uh, for another few years. Um, my second question is uh, regarding the library costs. So just to explain to the public, it's a st statutory tax that we're paying. It's mandated, um, right. and the, the library gets to levy. Can you explain about the levy from the library and, and it, a little bit more about the equalized ratio so people know how how it's divvied up between us and Marsh Township, uh, Marsh Town? Again, it's the start of a mill. It's, it's, it's based on um, our assessed value of properties. We have a joint library with the town of Marsh Town. So that equalized ratio right now, it's about 65, 64, 36, 64 and a half, 35 and a half, um, where the, the township taxpayers are paying that, but we have a higher tax uh, assessed value base than the town of Marsh Town does. But as that ratio changes, not only the library is very, very small, as you know, it, the bigger impact is on the, on the school district when that when that moves. 
in this year it moved, you know, one and a half percent into Morristown's favor. Um, so they're going to have to raise a little bit less. We've got to raise a little bit more. Um, but we've done some things, especially with our assessor, to offset that uh, with additional rateables coming in um, to help spread that out um, for our residents. But um, hope that somewhat explains it. All right, so what's so what's do you know the generally the library budget number, not just our and our share of that number? Do you know approximately how much they spend? The library budget is approximately uh, two point eight million dollars, with one point eight coming from us and the other nine hundred thousand coming from the town of Morris County. Very good. Thanks. One of the slides that we like to put out there because this really represents Morris Township and that is the high level services that we provide to um, our residents. Um, you know, we talked a little bit today earlier about you know emergency medical service and all volunteer and, and making sure that we have those services. Um, we have you know a top rated you know police department. We have a very robust fire department that is both a uh, career and a volunteer fire department so it, it's a mix um, certainly having those volunteers helps keep our costs down so it's not all paid firemen um, they do a tremendous job um, in supplementing the career guys and being there on the nights and weekends um, to that the five firehouses five fire companies um, you know very very important along with our office of emergency management um, you know, certainly echo uh, Jeff Paul and talking about you know what our office of emergency management does. Um, you know, being very proactive, um, doing things for our community, um, kind of being you know the one of the leaders in Morris County um, in providing that service. Um, we have exceptional health services through our, our health department, um, also looking out for different clinics and things that we can do for our residents um, for those health services. Um, Looking into our Department of Public Works and you know putting in the automated trash collection system, now the recycling system, maintaining our roads um, is is very very important. And probably the jewel of Morris Township is our, our recreation uh, facilities. Um, as you know, we just put in the turf field on Cornine Field, completed that project, but we've got 21 other uh, sites in Morris Township that are well maintained and available for all of our youth sports, our adult sports, um, to you know make it the Morris Township is a special place that offers exceptional recreation facilities. And then we have our professional services and that's our, our engineering department, our building department, our municipal clerk, our finance department, our IT guys, um, and our finance department um, all out there you know working together um, hand in hand. Uh, jointly to uh, provide services to our residents and making sure that um, anything that uh, we can do for them, we do do, and uh, we do it um, in an exceptional way. Always looking for shared services and kind of, when we look at shared service, we always want to make sure that we're not just jumping into a shared service, that we are looking for um, things that are going to significantly benefit the township of Mars, um, both efficiency and fiscally. Uh, one of the things we did was back in 2013 is to put together the joint municipal court with Madison, Chatham, Township, Chatham, Borough, and Harden, um, and going down there. It has saved the township, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars um, towards that. Um, we have a very, very efficient court um, that's run out of the borough of Madison. Um, but um, it is, again, often cited uh, by the state legislature as being one of the fine examples of what a joint municipal court should be and, uh, you know, urging other municipalities to follow the model that um, we have done with these other municipalities. Um, sewer, we've had agreements with a number of different towns over the years and, and basically that's because um, it's all based on gravity. And um, we take some, we give some, um, but we work out agreements um, with all our neighboring municipalities for uh, sewer services. So again, running efficiently, we run two sewer plants, um, but again, we're also you know, sharing flow as to, um, to, we don't have to put in pump stations and other things so that um, we can keep those costs down uh, by doing those different agreements with municipalities. 
Uh, again, we spoke briefly about the Joint Public Library. Again, you know, another fine jewel uh, that's been around for, for many, many years that's, you know, operated uh, uh, by the two municipalities um, and with oversight from both governing bodies. And then the other thing is the public safety communications is another place that, you know, we're saving a significant amount of money. Um, went back in 2011 up to the County of Mars for communications and dispatch services for our police, fire, and EMS. Again, saving hundreds of thousands of dollars um, every year. In fact, the first year we did, if we had not done that, we would have had to go out to a, a million dollar um, refurbishing of our communication center and new 911 system. So we were able to defer that cost and then for approximately $320,000 a year, um, we're getting this service and the county is kind of implemented now that they're, they're running it at a zero increase for uh, municipalities that have been there. Can I ask a question about that? Yes, uh, ma'am. It's my understanding that almost all of the towns in the county are part of that. Is that correct? That is incorrect. Incorrect. It's about two thirds. Two thirds. There's a number of municipalities that have decided they do not want to relinquish those responsibilities to the county or keep it in house. So um, towns like Madison, Florham Park, some have gone both ways where they're keeping some and sending out like Hanover Township, East Hanover, but. Um, some of the major, um, like Parsippany is not, which is one of the major ones, but you take, you know, Mars Township, Mars Town, Randolph, Roxbury are kind of the, the big boys in the game. Um, and then you have a lot of these smaller towns like the Mendham's, Marsh Plains, Harding's, <coughs> Mountain Lakes, the Boone's, that are all part of it. And it would be to everyone's benefit, um, cost-wise, if the number of towns increased. Right. Originally, when we, we joined, is once they got to a certain number, then it was going to be absorbed into the county tax base. And, um, that hasn't happened. It would be nice, but um, maybe someday it will be. But the county's also looked at that, so they have not increased our rates in, in a number of years for that, even though their, their costs are going up. Mm. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, again, looking at our key savings, how did we do this year? Um, again, about $180,000 on the joint municipal court. That's a very, very conservative number. I think if we actually were still having that joint court, it would probably be much higher because of employee costs. Um, with Chapter 78, um, our employees are, are contributing more than a million dollars um, to our health care costs. Uh, those health care costs are you know, pushing $3.5 million, but we get that $1 million offset on that. So about 30% of our health care costs are paid by our employees. And the way that works is um, their contribution is based on their salary and a percentage of their salary. So certainly your higher uh, paid employees are paying approximately 35% where some of your lower employees are paying about 10%. Um, well, we went out to, um, for tax appeal, it was an $800,000 expenditure that we had to break out over five years. Um, this will be the last year of that $160,000, um, so we will not have to raise that money in next year's budget, so that will be a positive going into 2020 of a little additional funding there um, that we can use for um, the budget purpose in 2020. The biggest thing in this, I give a lot of credit to our assessor, Kathy Villarengo. Um, you know, we're working very diligently, so when we have new properties coming on board, uh, we have uh, commercial properties that are being refurbished to make sure that all of the rateables um, increases are done in the tax year so that we can capture them uh, for the rest of the year, but more importantly going into the next year, um, that will help in our, uh, assess our, our rateable base. Um, this year, um, she it will bring in approximately $47 million in additional rateables. That results in, um, in this, just on the municipal level, <coughs> approximately $200,000 in additional tax revenue that we can use in the budget and spread that out so the impact is for all of our residents by bringing those additional rateables on. And it also helps us with that equalized ratio um, when we get into the school district and into the library. One, one other key savings that you maybe could have put up there was the uh, this trash collection system that was put in place a few years ago, the one-armed bandit. You mentioned before that one of the capital programs we're doing this year is to 
finally convert over the last sector of the township to the automated recycling, correct? That is correct, sir. And what do you suppose, uh, putting aside the capital appropriation for the truck itself, what do you suppose that the savings are in manpower uh, by converting from what used to be, what, three guys on a truck to to, to two gentlemen on a truck, two into one one man on a truck. Just one man on a truck. Right. And we went from 13 members into sanitation uh, down to seven. And also with a lot less injuries. Mm -hmm. And that was the that was actually the driving force behind it. Um, besides the you know it was the biggest expenditure going out. We probably spent over two million dollars to to put this in place over over a five year period. Uh, but what we're seeing is on the workers' comp side. Got the repetitive injuries of lifting, the back injuries, um, but more importantly, what we saw is sometimes people put out in trash like needles and other things, and we were getting, uh, you know, needle needle pricks, those kinds of things that we had to address. And then we had some instances where you have two guys, you know, loading stuff into the back and hitting the compactor, and people have put in volatile substances, and we've had exposures where they've been subject to chemicals and the truck catching on fire um, to do that. So. By going to this, you know, we've been able to kind of really protect our, our employees, reduce those worker comp injuries. Um, ex, you know, there is an exposure we've had, you know, where you know it goes into the truck and all of a sudden there's a strong smell of gasoline or something else, and the operator of the truck is able to get out and call for the services, and we entered out and find that somebody decided to dispose of gasoline by you know putting it in a plastic bag with kitty litter and you know come very volatile and, and catch on fire. And those, unfortunately, are not rare occurrences, but they happen. Um, and just trying to, you know, reduce those exposures to our employees. But again, we're also now saving on employee costs, mm -hmm. um, and also are dedicating employees to other positions where we can, you know, put another guy into the recreation to work on the fields, and putting guys into base and repair and those kind of things. So making sure that an infrastructure is we have manpower to do that, and we don't have to outsource that um, through our capital program. Um, <coughs> but it, it, it has been a savings to the township. Yes, sir. Yeah. Big out. I wanted to point out that it's yeah. big, big outlay, but we're, get, we're getting the dividends back now. Great. Very good. And credit to that goes to, I believe, former mayor Dan Caffrey for. Actually, it was Scott Rosenbush. It was Scott Rosenbush. And, and uh, Bridget brought it in. Uh, uh, Dan, Dan brought it over to recycling. Scott yeah. brought it in for right. They kind of they were garbage. both they were both on um, the roads and sanitation, and um, when we started looking at it, um, and then we we took it from there and um, you know started you know with the trash trucks one a year and now the recycling trucks one a year and mm -hmm. um, you'll have a recommendation to um, accept our bid proposal for our last truck shortly. Very good. Thanks. This is where all the money comes from um, on the revenue. So um, this year we're taking 6.25 million in fund balance. Um, last year our, our fund balance came in uh, approximately one million dollars above the year before. So we took that money and rolled it back into the budget, primarily to help with our, our capital program, um, our miscellaneous revenue, permits, fees, hotel tax, that kind of thing. Um, is pretty stable, coming in at uh, 5.7 million. Um, Rebecca's doing too good of a job um, on the collection of taxes because uh, the delinquent tax has gone down a little bit from previous years, but you know approximately uh, 0.48 million is coming in on that. Um, and again, our local tax this year is 22.32 million, um, and certainly help with the additional 47 million dollars in rateables. Um, although you see the library tax there, it is a separate tax, but it's still part of the municipal budget. Um, so it has to be raised, and you'll see it going out on the other side for the appropriations. Um, we're coming in this year a recommendation of a $36.65 million budget. And how are we going to spend that money? And it's primarily, as you see, we have um, our salary and wages for our employees um, are the, is the biggest driving factor on that to provide the services to our residents, um, about $13.9 million. Our operating expenses, again, stable at 9.73 million. Um, we did see an ex increase on those statutory expenses. Um, this year will be at 3.57 million. There's that joint library at 1.83 million coming in and going out. And then our capital 
improvements. We're putting in approximately one million dollars uh, towards our capital improvements um, this year um, to uh, assist with getting all those projects done uh, that we previously spoke about. Our debt service this year is 3.27 million, and the reserve for uncollected taxes is at 3.2 million, same as last year, and the deferred charges that that tax appeal payment at 0.16 or $160,000. So this is where the, the tax dollars go, um, and although you know, Morris Township, it's, it's, we were up at one point around 25%, it's kind of reduced that to, to about 23%. Um, the county's going up a little bit, the, uh, the school has gone up, uh, the school went up from 60 to 61% this year, um, so, and then the library's in there, but again, 23, 23 cents on the tax dollar is um, part of the tax bill. The driving force, as you can see, is definitely the the school bill. Uh, the school, you know, goes up, you know, at least two percent a year. Sometimes they dip into that uh, cap bank and have to, like they did last year, uh, for security services. Um, but again, we're looking at two percent increase on, on the school board um, from on the school tax this year, and that'll be the driving force on the tax bill this year. So, as we take a look at it, we talked a little bit about. The, if there's an appropriations cap for 1.83 million below that. Um, you look at the 2% tax levy cap for 2.39 million below that. Um, and I'm pleased to put forward to you that uh, the tax rate, the municipal tax rate for 2019 uh, will remain the same as it was in 2019. There will be no increase on the municipal tax rate. As we spoke, looking at a very robust um, capital program to keep our infrastructure. Um, going forward, looking at road reconstruction projects, uh, maintaining our infrastructure, um, overlay of and drainage projects, purchase of equipment, uh, recreation fire department OEM to maintain their facilities and their equipment, you know, keeping our two sewer plants and nine pump stations at optimum level and running efficiently and the two gorgeous swim pools that we put in a couple of years ago, continuing to keep updating them and uh, adding different amenities um, and making improvements uh, to them. And then we're going to make some improvements to the train station. Just, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back one second. Some of the major projects that we completed in 2018 were Lake Valley Road improvements. Again, that was done with a, partially with a, a grant from the state. Uh, the long-awaited Cornine Field uh, was completed uh, last year, and we had the grand opening for that uh, two weeks ago. Uh, again, a jewel of Morris Township, uh, having that superb recreation facility, turf field with lights, um, as a uh, major benefit for all of our youth sports, um, because it is limited to just youth sports uh, for that. Again, making our sewer plants, uh, you know, running efficiently and, and keeping those two facilities up in uh, top-notch performance. And as we spoke a little bit before, we are in the last part of the automated trash recycling um, with the recommendation to purchase the last truck that we need. Um, currently, we have been able to provide um, the automated trash collection for all of our residents and all of our residential properties in Morris Township with the recycling, with the exception of the townhome communities. And with the purchase of the new truck, we will implement the townhome and communities um, <coughs> once that's taken place. And uh, so everybody in the township will be on automated trash and recycling collection. Yes, quick question, sir. Yes, sir. When will we have the uh, uh, trash pickup and the uh, recyclables on the same day? Is that coming up? <coughs> January 1st. Yep. We're looking to, for the implementation at the same time. Um, you know, we were originally hoping to put that in place this year and just, it was uh, efficient wise we weren't able to do that, so um, we're looking to do that. But sure. I've had other complaints, other concerns that people like the exercise program going out twice a week rather than <laughs> once a week. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. but that, that's the, the initial thought process is to put that into place. Sure. Um, basically, it'll, it'll make it easier for everybody by just having one day a week of take your trash and recycle it out instead of two nights or two days. And the, the other important component, sir, is 
if there are days when, with the holidays or the snow days where we would have ca canceled the recycling pickup next week, now it's similar to the trash, everything just gets moved today. So if there's a holiday on Monday, everything gets moved Tuesday through Friday. If the holiday's on Thursday, then everything gets picked up on Friday. So um, the benefit of that is with the fully implementation is that um, there'll be no more people that are on Mondays trying to get the short end of the sick time, so yeah. short end of the stick, the stick sometimes because you know the holidays that fall on Mondays are more than the holidays that fall on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So, no. or like Friday this week, where I'm not getting my recycling picked up. Correct, because of Good Friday. Right. But if you wish to, on Saturday morning, you may take it to the recycling depot. It's a great place to meet people. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on Saturday. Especially on Saturday morning. They, there's there's coffee hour. There's the regulars, and um, it is uh, a great place to uh, to meet your constituents on any Saturday morning. Um, I'll consider a lot of stories. I'll consider that if I can strap my recycling bin to the top of my car. <laughs> I kind of miss it. I used to like that because I never broke my box. So I would just wait till Saturday and run them down there, and my wife would kind of go, "How come it took you an hour?" Well. <laughs> What we're looking for to complete in 2019 is uh, Washington Valley Road, um, you know, a port and connector road there, and, and using the grant money and the general capital money to, to move that forward. Uh, currently, Oak Lane is under reconstruction. Uh, House Road um, area will also be going out for reconstruction. That uh, bit will be going out next month. Uh, we are finishing up on the Collinsville playground improvements and the long-awaited uh, Skyline Sewer Project is commencing um, this month, and again, putting into place the automated trash recycling for phase three. So those are our major projects for 2019. On the pools, um, we are gonna do some improvements there. We talked briefly before, um, again, keeping them up and running um, now that we have a significant investment in them. Um, you know, chlorine is the, you know, just destroys um, anything that's metal in some of our built infiltration systems, so new UV controls, replacing some doors, some the, shade, the shade structures, and then also some metal lockers, replacing them with fiberglass uh, to offset that chlorine there. And then just a, you know, a small project over at the train station, which is a utility and um, somewhat of a historic building, and then you know, keeping that look to it, and the, the gutter system there is starting to lots of holes and everything else and you know bringing that up but maintaining the look of the historic building that is there um, instead of putting on what I would call modern day gutters. Um, kind of looking at our, our municipal debt and as I said we've kind of looked at that over the years and maintained that you'll see that on that general that number doesn't fluctuate too much goes up then a little bit down a little bit but um, really kind of maintaining the kind of philosophy that we're only going to incur debt for what we retire um, back in 2014 um, we implemented going uh, pay as you go in our sewer utility so we had not raised any debt in our sewer utility since 2014 um, as you can see that number is going down um, where it was 17 over 17 million dollars Back in 13, we're down to just over 12 million, and certainly we'll, you know, continue working on that. Um, the big one there, as you say, is the swim pool utility. Um, you know, roughly we went out uh, for the pools two million one year, two million the next year. We were at four million. Only got 10 years on that, so as you know, that's the big hammer um, in paying off the debt service. Certainly, our swim pool utility is able to maintain its operating costs and its salary and wage costs, um, but we'll be knocking down that swim pool utility debt um, you know, over the next few years um, for that. And again, we've taken the same philosophy on our parking utility, again, since 2014, and going and paying as we go, um, we've been able to sustain that with our parking fees. You know, um, we've seen a significant increase in the number of people using the parking lot um, and but with that extra revenue it is you know paying for projects as we go as I said back in 15 we did a $300,000 project to repaving the lot restriping the lot doing some restructure stuff and again continuing that and doing the small projects and paying as we go so 
Again, our total debt is just under $40 million. Um, I'm sure Mr. Gannon or Mr. McNary can give you the number. We could probably be well over $180 million, somewhere like that, by statutory requirements. But I know it's a big number. Yeah, so you're statutorily around, you want to be, uh, have $187 million with that. So, so you're uh, $163.5 under that. So. I hate to pay the debt service on that. <laughs> Our sewer utilities. Okay, these are our utilities, and these are the, the budgets for them. Um, running the uh, the sewer, it's a two major sewer plants, nine pump stations. It's a big operation. Um, out of that 9.2 million, roughly 5.8 is operating expenses. Uh, 2.19 is we're raising for capital as we go, and we're paying off uh, 1.3 million in debt service. On the parking utility. Um, we're looking at $355,000 operating budget, um, roughly $239,000 is our day-to-day -day expenses, $25,000 for capital improvements this year, and again, our debt service on that is $90,700, and again, we'll be moving towards eliminating that debt. The big one is the swim pool, um, you know, roughly the running the two swim pools um, with the staff and with um, the operating expenses for that is approximately $1.1 million. Um, approximately $718,000 of that is our operating expenses and our salary expenses. Um, we're going to have a small capital improvement on that, you know, for those things we talked about, about a little over $4,000. But the big nut on that one is the $389,770 that we have to do for debt service. And um, as we have done in the past years, the general budget will supplement the swim pool utility budget so we can pay the debt service. Just to, before you go off of that slide, um, those, are the, those are the three utilities that are run separate than the municipal budget, but if you add up all the numbers, the 36.65 in the municipal budget, with those three numbers, you get to a number that's uh, just over $47 million um, in tax dollars. And I guess you back out the 1.83 if that's the correct number for the library. Correct. Um, so maybe you're down to 45 million dollars. The unlike the general budget, the utilities primarily are run on, on membership fees, user fees, um, as their their source of income. And that's the reason that they are utilities because they're strictly based on, on user fees um, rather than tax dollars. Right. But if you look at the total the total budget, yes, for our town. About we're at over forty-five million dollars. Correct. Yep. yep. And Fran knows where every penny is. <laughs> she does. Okay. Um, the important thing for our budget and our and keeping us fiscally responsible is is fund balance. Um, this gives us a lot of um, security to maintain that fiscal responsibility. For an example. We had those four nor'easters come in back to back to back last year. Um, our costs for those were well over eight hundred thousand dollars in addressing that with snow removal, debris removal, overtime costs for our police, our fire, and that. Um, we didn't have to. We were able to sustain that um, and then apply for the FEMA funding, and we're going to get back, you know, probably almost six hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. Once the money's been appropriate, we're just waiting for them to write the check. But allowing us to have that fund balance, um, we don't have to worry about having special appropriations, borrowing the money um, when we have major incidents that come in, um, such as those that are, you know, as worse was when Hurricane Irene and Hurricane Sandy and the Northeaster hit us back to back to back over that period of time in 2011, 2012, when I started scratching my head as to why am I the township administrator. <laughs> Uh, before you continue, since the, the topic of the slide is fund balance, can you give the public an explanation of what fund balance actually means? I mean, we understand it up here, but just to educate the public, and then and then once you explain fund balance, what you mean by the first words you use there, role fund balance. Right. So we're, the fund balance is, we, we have a budget every year. We, we have, um, at the end of the year, we're looking to see how much money we have on hand. Um, and then taking a portion of that every year to roll back into the budget for stability. 
Um, and that's what I mean by rolling the fund balance, meaning, you know, usually that's about, you know, five million to six, this year it's gonna be $6.2 million. The fund balance came in um, last year about a million dollars above it did in 17. Um, we're using that money, putting it back into the budget this year to give you the, the, the flat tax rate. Uh, we were looking at roughly a million dollars increase just based on salaries and the statutory expenses um, and a little bit of additional debt service. We were able to completely offset that with that fund balance uh, that came in at the end of the year and rolling that back into the budget and continue to do that. I'm going to get into a little bit later with the fund balance policy and, and the importance of that in keeping a certain amount of money on hand as to what's recommended um, by the state of New Jersey also. Um, so. It, it's really to keep us stable um, and be able to address anything that comes at us um, in types of emergency appropriations um, and keeping that tax rate as, as flat as we can. So can you view it as like cash in the bank? You know, sometimes like I, said, I, sometimes like, I look at it as like a rainy, you know, a rainy day fund. If anything bad goes wrong, you have, just like we all do, we save for, you know, we save for emergency expenses. Right. It is because we, you know, if we didn't have fund balance and, you know, this year, you know, as I said, I had a, a million dollars increase between salaries and statutory expenses and debt service. If I didn't have that to offset it, we'd be looking at a fairly significant tax increase this year. But because I had that, or I had the availability of that, I was able to offset those major expenses with the additional money we had on hand. Mm -hmm. So that fund balance will fluctuate from year to year depending on the emergencies and the other spikes Correct. expenses we right. have. You know what we take in, and, and certainly I think we're going to see some increases on that because, you know, we run very fiscally responsible. We're going to we have a number of projects that are out there um, that are going to be coming online. Um, you know, we'll be finishing up the the Honeywell project, the Colgate project is is, is underway. Um, we've got some other projects that are coming. Hopefully, we'll see some you know some increases in um, commercial rateables um, rather than residential rateables. Um, to help us maintain that and certainly it gives us the option or the tax committee the option when that additional money coming in is do we reduce taxes or do we take that and we do more infrastructure repairs and do those kinds of things um, and services for our residents and those are decisions to be made each year based on what that fund balance comes in um, at the end of the year and where it was in relationship to where it came in the previous years and where we see it going and again looking out where do we see what do we see coming down the road? Could the public look at that? Uh, Mr. Quinn is saying uh, municipal accounting will use a fund balance, but if we were a corporation, we would have assets less liabilities equals uh, equity. equity, and that's basically what it is. Surplus is the uh, is the uh, equity that we built up over the year. Yes. Sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, yes, please. The, the other side is the budget only reflects uh, our known appropriations. So there could be tax appeals out there that exist, or the potential for a tax appeal that does exist that's not in the budget. There could be infrastructure that hasn't been updated that's not in the budget. So I'm speaking generically when it comes to not just this municipality, but other municipalities. Uh, where well, you see maybe they don't stay on, on top of their infrastructure, maybe they don't have tax appeal reserves, um, that fund balance then isn't a real number. So there's things that are in the budget and there's things that aren't in the budget. And the fund balance protects us against those things that aren't in the budget. And, but in other towns that haven't had that, sorry, John, um, in those towns that haven't had it, I've just heard stories they have to go out and borrow money because they have an emergency and they actually don't have the funds on hand. That, and it's also a deferred charge. It's an emergency appropriation that has to be raised in subsequent years using resources of uh, subsequent years that should have been taken care of in the current year. Very good. Mr. Arvinides? Mr. Magnum, could there also be in this budget or any budget revenues that have not been accurately reflected in that revenues are being reported at a certain number, but really the revenues come in at a higher. Does well, that, does that yes, that, that could happen, and that's a question. Okay. Mayor, 
just to just on the tax appeals, I mean, as Mick McNary said, we had that. We were we had a 4.9 million dollar exposure at the end of 2010 on tax appeals. Um, we did not have anything in reserve for those tax appeals. Um, back in 11, 12, we put in two million million dollars each year to bring it down to 2.9. But then we had to go before the local finance board to bar technically borrow that 2.9 million dollars. We did borrow it from ourselves out of our open space fund. But again, over the next five years of budgets, we had to put in $565,000 for five years to pay off that $2.9 million. So the budget that came in the following year was, I think, one of the years that we did the reduction because, again, we were raising less, you know, that 565 that we had no longer had to raise in the budget. And as I think spoke previously about is, you know, that's a lesson learned that you know we've got to make sure we have that you know exposure. It, you can you can count on your your commercial tax appeals. I think it's a business, um, and they're always pushing it, and the repeat after repeat. Um, but we have to be ready for those um, and and have that exposure. So we we're not looking at it where we have to go out to debt for it um, or have to raise additional funds in the budget, um, in my opinion, so that um, it doesn't have an adverse impact. Um, on our residents, especially if you had to go out to bump out for a special appropriation and then you're paying it out over a five year period. Mm -hmm. Tim, with, with regard to, I, I understand you know, having the, the rainy day funds and all of that, but here's an example of a tax appeal. If the tax appeal comes in this year and we pay out $3 million this year, when we have the ability to borrow, which I'm not, I'm not in favor of debt, but when it comes to municipal budgeting, we have something like that that hits us in one year, and we can borrow it almost free. There's municipal rates that we can go out for bonds are, in my eyes, free. Is it a fair way to tax the residents that if there's a $3 million settlement this year, that the people that live in this town today have to pay for that whole $3 million instead of spreading it over time? Because somebody may not live here next year, some new people are going to come in. So it's not a fair way to tax. The only well, I would put that also one year finally paying it out. It's probably for previous years. It's not just that year, but we guess we are paying it out in that year. But we are also looking at it every year. So if we're paying something out in 2019, we probably that's probably a tax appeal that is for 2018, 2017, 2016, and maybe 2015. During that period of 15 through 18. We have been putting money into the tax appeal reserve um, because we see that exposure. So we kind of been taking money each year um, and putting it away. So when we have to pay it out in 2019, it's coming from that reserve that we put money in each year, previous years to that. So um, it's not where we're going to go out to bond or borrow the money and then have to pay it out in 19, 20, and 21. Right, but, you're, but, but the comments that were made were that we need to have money in surplus so that we can pay for these tax appeals, but we've already put money away for these tax appeals. I've been putting money away for tax appeals since 2011. Right, but those are not part of our surplus, are they? It's, it's part of it. What, what is, is it? I know it's, it's a reserve. Right, well, right so, so we already have money put aside for that, so you don't need money for an emergency tax appeal because we've already been planning for that. That is correct. So, in essence, then we don't need as much in surplus to cover for a tax appeal emergency. Unless we had something major come in, but no, so I, 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 I mean, from what we've done over the last years, I'm very comfortable with what we've done and looking at that. And every year, there may be a year where I, I agree um, with you on that. I mean, we may have a year where, um, you know, again, you know, looking at the, the the Honeywell property, you know, we were looking at a significant exposure and put that money away and um, you know um, I think Mr. Mills and you know working on it with council to to do that and reduce that exposure um, you know was important and also you know doing that but we had put that money away over the years and um, for that but um, and you know I think we've got some other commercial properties that that do concern me um, and especially when there's high vacancy rates we've been very good over the last couple of years but I have another office building that just went 100% vacant. Um, that could, you know, if it doesn't get filled soon, could result in a, you know, fairly significant tax appeal that we'll have to address. 
Um, and then we have our regulars. I mean, like in Canada every year, that they're going to file, they're going to get a settlement. Next year, they're going to file again. Um, but it takes about you know three plus years, uh, especially if you have to go to tax court. Uh, uh, on the other side too, we have new rateables that are coming on. Yes. We have pilot money that's going to be coming in. Correct. And other developments that so you know there's we're not it's not doomsday that we're just losing. No, we're we're not doomsday. We're I'm. I'm my my recommendation on it is really just being prudent and um, making sure that if something major happens, that we can we can adequately handle it. Nice. But also keeping our our tax rate um, as low as we can. You know, that's a, I guess there's a balance. But looking back at this, about eight nine years ago, we I guess we're not as uh, uh, conservative with our fund balance as we are now, and we have. We had to lay off 17 people. We didn't. We weren't here, but they laid off 17 people and had 20 people go into retirement. And that's something that I would never, ever want to have happen. As conservative as I could be fiscally, that's what I want to do from the township. You know, and it's lessons learned. I mean, uh, you know, Morris Township has always been, you know, fiscally responsible on that. You know, we were not keeping fund balance on, on hand. We were trying to keep the tax rate. You know, try to do trying to keep the tax rate low, nobody really kind of, that I'm aware of, were able to predict that the bottom falling out and, you know, 2010 just being disastrous for, you know, government entities, um, you know, losing state aid money and, you know, having a $4 million, you know, budget uh, hole and how are you going to address that and not having the fund balance um, available to help offset that. Um, I think the things that we've put in place and basically lessons learned uh, back then is to making sure that, you know, we are fiscally responsible so, you know, we go into another downturn like that, we're not going to have to go into, you know, reducing services for our residents having significant layoffs, um, reductions of force, furloughs, and the tax appeals, I mean, the economy is great right now, so our tax, I mean, our tax appeals are down this year. Um, but if the economy turns a little bit and goes down, we're going to see you know an increase in, in those uh, in those tax appeals and uh, the amount of money that's being spent. So um, we want to be prepared for that and, and really taking you know a lesson learned from you know what what took place in the in the two thousands and making sure that not all of our fund balance is going into the budget process, but we're keeping um, you know roughly fifteen percent of our uh, appropriations on hand. And you just made the point that I was going to make. Uh, we've been lucky that the last eight years the economy's been strong. It's been going up every year and the economy is still strong, but it's not going to go up forever. Nothing goes up forever. Things fluctuate eventually. And so while I understand your points you're trying to make, um, John, that you know maybe today the reserve is higher than it needs to be, um, but you never know when the economy's going to turn. and. The things I don't know if the bottom's going to fall like it did in 2010 or 2009, uh, but you know, it's just, the reserve is there in case that happens. Mm -hmm. well, the, the, economy, the economy falling doesn't have the, the direct impact to what happens here. Um, well, it has all, all, of, all, all of the. I'm not the war of people being laid off, but out of all the layoffs that we had, all of the services are still being provided in the municipal in the, in the township. Um, at a very high level, even with the less less employees. No, I, was, I was talking about the reserve for tax appeals, um, and if the economy does turn, and you know our our, our commercial space is taxed based on occupancy rate, and so if the economy does turn, people are laid off at businesses. It's not I wasn't talking about here, but if people are laid off at businesses, and if the occupancy rate goes down, and we have those tax appeals, and that's what we're protecting ourselves against, and so maybe we're we're being a little conservative in how much we're saving, but um, it, the money is there if that happens. And another point of view is <clears throat> if the state is having trouble balancing the budget and their pension costs are totally unfunded in so many ways, that $3.2 million may be something at some juncture the state would say, let us go take X amount out of each of those things. So that's, that's a fact that we don't know. And we've done this together, Tim and I, for the last eight years, with Jeff included this year, and 
John the year before, and we've never really known what that state state aid was going to be. It was a, it was a not scary, but it was a it was a concern to us. Still is, yeah. Mr. Mayor, one other point, and both uh, Mr. Gannon and myself have taken notice. You were talking about a healthy uh, fund balance that has been in place for a number of years. You've started to, you know, you fund a tax appeal, you know, reserve account. You're starting to um, fund capital improvements through your operating budget. Mm -hmm. And the point that we find a little bit amazing, you've done this over 10 years without raising taxes. Yeah. Well, especially in the last five, in the last five years, we've kept the uh, tax rate flat. But well, I'm saying there's a graph that shows it. there has not been yeah. a significant tax increase. Mm -hmm. But we've over lowered it. Standard. We've lowered it by a point in two of the last five years. So I think that. So with all these, all I'm saying is with yeah. all these, in, you know, all these safeguards right. to create these reserves, you haven't raised taxes to do that. Yeah. Did we talk about the fund balance? We're, we're going that. I, I had the button. I, I, I overstepped my bounds. <laughs> um, you know, we talked about you know looking at this, and, and I reached out to many municipalities in the state, and you know, really having a, a policy in place as to you know what our, our fund balance is, and I think we we had a very happy medium here um, to do that. Um, you know, again, basically being fiscally conservative. You know, we had that AAA uh, credit rating. Um, you know, it is uh, one of the staples of Morris Township. We're certainly going to need that AAA credit rating when we, we go out to bond if it's next year or um, or what we do. Um, you know, maintaining that cash flow for emergencies that we spoke about, unanticipated expenditures. So, you know, without reading it all, but um, it just fund balance is just just very very important for our fiscal stability. Um, it's also recognized by, you know, the state of New Jersey under Division of Local Government Services um, and, and the credit rating agencies as to how much money they have on hand and certainly supports our, our AAA credit, credit rating. Um, you know, I kind of looked at, you know, where, where we should be. Um, the, the norm with the municipalities that have put in the policies is roughly 15 to 20 percent of the general operating uh, budget appropriations. For the salaries, operating expenses, statutory expenses, debt service, and capital improvement, um, I did take back that out um, with the reserve fund collected taxes. Um, we're trying to roll that back in every year um, at 3.2 million, um, even though it's a one-time uh, appropriation. And then the the library tax that goes in and out. So you take that five million dollars off. Um, you know, you're, you're we're looking at roughly 31 million dollars and taking. You know, 15% of that. Um, this year, um, after this year's budget, um, we're going to have right, right around five million, just a little over five million, um, as our leftover for our fund balance, and you know that represents 16%. So we're we're right in that number of, of looking at that policy of that 15 to 20%. Um, and again, every year to kind of evaluate that number where we are. Um, Know, what comes in next year for our fund balance and then how do we, if it's you know pushing that number how do we, what do we take that money do we do it as a tax uh, reduction do we put that into additional services do we put that into a different additional infrastructure um, this year we put it into the additional infrastructure um, but it was a thought process in this year's budget for that mm -hmm. Good. And just kind of to show that that fund balance history and you know the amount that's that that's used and kind of you know you look back at um, you know 2008 we had you know talked about not you know putting a lot of money into the budget um, but then um, you know what the the year end balance was so you know back in eight you know they used 6.5 but they only kept back 1.6 um, you know and um, a little bit more in nine, and then the kind of the bottom fell out, you know, in ten as to what you're going to keep. You know, we've gone back and forth, but um, you know, we're, you know, we're we're in a very very good position right now. Um, you know, we have raised it up a little bit. Um, I just think it's the the, the prudent thing to do. Um, 
you know, as to where, where we are now and, you know, maintaining that fund balance policy from that previous slide is just um, basically responsible on, on our part. So is this slide showing that the fund balance last year was 6.25 million? No, that's, it's what's used in the following year's budget. So at the end of 2018, um, our fund balance was $11.3 million. We are now using 6.25 of that in this year's budget. So every year it's offset a little bit. So you have to kind of just look at it as to what it is at the end and then what you're using from the, the following year. So given that we rolled 6.25 from the prior year, correct? That's rolling into this year? That's this year's budget. So when we finished up last year, uh, when Fran did our annual financial statement, um, our year-end fund balance was 11.335 million. As I said, it's a little bit 1.1 million dollars above the end of the fund balance that we used, uh, or had in 2017. And that's the money that then we're rolling back into the budget as you see. Previous year, you used 5.3, we're using 6250, so 950,000 dollars that is rolling back into this year's budget. Right. And out of that 6.25, we're using 5. Point, what was it 5.1? No, no. Come down. Are we that's have 5.1. That's that's what we have left. Yeah. That that's that's in that's in the bank. Right. That's what's in the bank. That's in the bank. So it is the correct way of thinking that that difference is what's allowing us to keep the tax rate stable. Correct. I was able to take that 950 thousand dollars and basically use that to help offset. Um, all those statutory and, and salary expenses that came in. So, um, as you see, the, the budget is actually a million dollars higher than the 2018 budget, but we were able to offset that and roll that money back into the budget and, again, come in with a uh, flat budget. And at the, end, at the end of this year, as I predicted last year, our fund balance will be at least a million dollars more than what we ended this year in. I'm hopeful. No, it will be, which in essence is a tax increase. And that's what my argument was at our last meeting, that even though we are not raising the tax rate, we are still increasing taxes to all of our residents. If you go back to 2010, with a fund balance of five and a half million, to get us up over $11 million, that fund balance doubled, more than doubled, which to me is a tax increase. So for the last eight years, everybody's been paying way too much in taxes here, to get the services that we get, just so that we can say that we're fiscally responsible, which, yeah, we are, but we're dealing with other people's money. It's not our money. So when you deal with other people's money, there's a different definition for fiscal responsibility. And doubling our fund balance over the last eight years, I think, is not being fiscally responsible to our residents, because we've overtaxed our residents by over $6 million over the last eight years. And we're going to add another million dollars to our fund balance again next year, which to me, that's another tax increase. So coming in with a zero tax rate change is a tax increase. And I hope that's a fair way to tax our residents. Well, interestingly, over the past several years, at least since I've been here, uh, our auditors every year have said that we ought to raise the tax rate <coughs> by a certain amount, whether it be a half a percent or one percent. <clears throat> I believe the deal of the this year sort of uh, uh, echoed that, and the, uh, the financial people in the township felt that, struck that way also. Uh, Jeff and I felt that we'd like to come in flat. We had the approbation of uh, two of our three other committee people, and it seems like a very fair and reasonable economic thing to do because one never knows what goes on in this world financially, economically. Look what the Fed did to us in uh, October, November, December by jacking up uh, the federal funds rate. So you got to be very, very cautious when it comes to money. Peter, with all due respect to our, our professionals that are here today and the ones that served in the past, um, they are not budget experts. They're auditors. Mm -hmm. So they audit the books. They're not here to tell us how to prepare our budgets for our residents. We get elected to do that. And that's what we're sitting up here to do. They can make their recommendation, but again, they're not budget experts. They're experts at audits. Well, I, I disagree slightly with you because they have been doing this for many, many, many years for different towns, and you become an expert by doing something over a period. I, I'm also a monitor, and I will never say that I'm an expert at doing things that I, you know, for people that I audit. 
I, I am good at auditing, right. and that's what they're hired to do. They're not hired to tell us how to prepare our budget. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Mayor, if I could just, uh, not, not to create any controversy here, but just for the record, um, I myself has been the budget consultant to the Essex County Board of Chosen Freeholders for 31 years. Um, that means I conduct the budget hearings at the County of Essex. I'm instrumental in, in uh, uh, meeting with department heads and making sure that uh, the budget comes in on budget. I, I look at it on a regular basis. For 15 years, I was a budget consultant in the city of Orange. Uh, it's an urban area, it has a lot of problems, and it presented a lot of challenges. For eight years, I was a budget consultant for the city of East Orange. That's a massive budget down. So, I just want to make the record straight that my expertise lies in both areas. And, and I, I, I thank you for clearing that up, but we didn't hire you to consult us on the budget, we hired you to prepare an audit. Correct? I do think, well, so I, so so I don't know. Another, another thing, and I, I, I know Mr. Attorney, many, many years when I was the mayor of Roseland, I brought him in because he is the best at what he does. And uh, he will tell you that I had the same philosophy back then for 14 years, but even prior to him coming and preparing budgets. And when I left there in 2010, I think Roseland was in great financial shape, even with tax decreases and paying off our debts and having surpluses where they were supposed to be. And I think the, the members here believe that I want to use more surplus in, in lowering the taxes. The budget that I presented at budget uh, hearing meetings and our last meeting, I did not add any more money to this, to utilize any more money from surpluses in order to lower taxes. We can leave that the same, just more accurately reflect the ins and the outs of the budget, and we can lower taxes and save residents money. I'm not touching surplus at all. And we're still going to repl replenish the, the surplus next year. Yeah. But if you lower the, I mean, you're talking about the reserve for uncollected taxes. No, that's, see, the, no. There's a, there's a whole bunch of things in the budget that I put, that I mentioned last meeting, and I mentioned that my committee uh, budget meetings that um, we could lower. I, at the beginning, I said half a point. Right now, I'm at two points. Two hundred dollar savings per average household does not handcuff our town. Does not uh, utilize any more surplus. It's not increased debt, and we can save people two hundred dollars. But that's but that's a one that's a one time thing, and no, then you not, I can lose do it next year. I can do it the year after, and I can do it the year. And after. then and then you're left with no surplus I'm, at the end of the day. I'm not, not utilizing any more surplus than you did. They will, it won't be there to flow over to the following year. It, it, but we'll still have twelve million dollars in surplus. And where is the money going to come from? It doesn't just, we're just not, We're just not increasing surplus anymore. Yeah, and then what do you have to roll over? The same that you have now. It's not going to be the same. It will be. Because the way our budget is right now, you're going to increase more than a million dollars next year. So my budget will not increase it by that extra million. It will increase it by six million. <laughs> I think your I think your uh, your thought process is very precise and concise. The thing that I worry about mostly are the vagaries of what goes on in the in the world, in the government, in municipal government. And I I would stay at this juncture of saying that we should be as conservative as we possibly can in this budget. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Move on. Move on. We talked a little bit before about property values and equalized ratio. Um, you know, our assessed property is, is you know five point three billion dollars again, up forty seven million dollars over last year. Um, you know, the good thing for our residents, though, you know, we see that equalized ratio continue to go down. That's actually for them when they're selling them houses. It works just the other way that they're going to get more than their assessed value for their for their property. So, um, but again, everything rolls into the equalized value when we're looking at county taxes, and more importantly with the, uh, the so, um, you know, we got a little over $5.5 billion um, on the equalized. You saw the, you know, assessed property value going up, and it's been going up um, in small increments. Um, and certainly with some of the, the projects going on, I would, I would hope that it will, you know, continue to, uh, that assessed property value to increase um, and certainly bring in additional uh, tax revenue that will soften the burden. Um, 
especially when we look at the, the school tax. So this is my, my projections this year as to uh, where our, our, our property tax rate is and what increases that we're going to see, um, you know, based on uh, what residents had paid last year and pretty close to what, you know, the projections will that be the, when the final 2019 tax rate is. Um, again, the municipal aid is staying the same, We're seeing a slight increase on the, on the county rate of approximately $17. Um, the school, again, is going up 2%. Um, what makes the school challenging is the equalized ratio, um, but they also run on a dis different uh, fiscal year. They run on the fiscal year of July 1st to June 30th, so when we see the equalized ratio and the significant increase um, for our residents, we're looking at about, for the school year, about $1.2 million, but it, it's offset because last year we the equalized ratio swung in our favor. Now it's going back to Morristown. But although our residents are, are looking at an exposure over a, a million dollars on that school, the additional rateables that came into play this year are over five hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars in additional revenue to offset that. So basically, even though the Equalized ratio swung heavily to Morristown's favor this year with those additional red rules in our town. Our residents are going to see a 2% increase um, on, on their school tax. It's going to be about $120 um, just based on, on the school tax uh, for our residents. Uh, open space is the same. It's been the same for, for, for many, many years. Um, doesn't bring in a ton of money, but we've been able to put that into uh, the open space account and then when uh, projects come up or properties uh, become available, um, certainly we have that funding to help offset it, uh, especially if we're going to do any applications with the County Open Space Fund and our cost share with them. Um, I said the library is going up a little bit based primarily on the equalized ratio. Um, our residents will pay in it probably an additional $5. Um, overall, um, our residents on the average uh, assessed home, which is $560,000. Uh, this year we'll be paying uh, just under 10,300, which is is up from 10,153. Um, that was in 2018. But again, that will that's a projection that will be finalized um, when the tax rate um, after the state of New Jersey budget is adopted, um, hopefully by the end of June. Um, I'll give Mayor, Mayor Brazel, he said, can you give us a slide and kind of show where Morris Township has been over the years compared to where the school district is? And I think the slide, slide tells everything that significantly, you know, the school district is, you know, 2% pretty much all, all along. Um, you know, that kind of look where you go up and coming back, that, that's the year of the reval. That's not a, a decrease. Um, it's just that the rate went down uh, about 43% because of the, the reval. But as you can see, you know, we'd say we had that little blip too, but um, we've been pretty flat um, since uh, 2010, um, but not much uh, increase at all. And again, we're always looking into, you know, the future, and, you know, these are the, the big things that uh, we want to look at. Again, we know what our, our, pretty much what our salary and wage increase will be next year, primarily because it's driven by our union contracts and that, that, and that 2%. Um, again, a lot of $160,000 to, to roll into 2020 that we don't have to account for um, as we have the past five years. You know, looking at our revenue projections um, and where they are, as you know, our, our building department uh, and construction code fees have, have somewhat skyrocketed and looking at that, um, I'm sure there will become a time when um, that will, again, flatten out. Um, but then also, you know, as we go into and, and, and the red herring being the state aid, but again, help benefit costs and pension costs, you know, somewhat beyond our control, um, but getting those numbers from the state and then factoring that into the budget. And I'm sure you're hired, tired of me talking, so I will end my presentation and certainly open up to any other questions or, or, or comments.
You guys have any comments you want to make first? Uh, for, uh, first of all, uh, this is our first meeting before you, and I wanted to thank all of you for devoted confidence and awarding us the contract as the township auditors. Um, we, we did meet with the administration um, just to look at the philosophy of how you do your budget. We certainly uh, did not give uh, any uh, advice as to what numbers to put in the budget, but certainly uh, just to get a handle on the, um, the, I guess, the fiscal policy of, of, the, uh, of the township. Um, you know, there's, like, there's you know, diverse opinions. Uh, from our standpoint, either one's wrong. It's just a question that, that um, we believe, uh, and again, for whatever it's worth, it's just kind of an overall viewpoint, um, that you know there's still opportunities here to utilize that fund balance for purposes of taking down debt um there's there's nothing to say that you have to go out for debt yet 7.3 billion dollars worth of bands uh, there's no reason you can't appropriate some of that fund balance to pay down some of those bands and although uh you know 40 million dollars in debt sounds like a lot of money for a township this size it's it's definitely manageable given the fact that you have been able to generate positive results of operations every year uh, but at the same time those are things to start uh, we believe to start kind of looking at whether or not so fund balance may be high but if you deserve if you start to desire to design in your budget opportunities to pay capital improvements going forward out of the operating fund as well as possibly pay down bands as opposed to going out and funding them uh, you know, as bonds for an extended period of time, which includes the cost of interest, um, you know, that's something we believe you should, you should take a look at. But again, ours, we're kind of at a, a 10,000 view down and, uh, and believe that this is a, a fiscally prudent budget. Uh, <coughs> Can I tell you one more thing? Yes, please. Um, I'm very comfortable in where we are. I would love to say, especially in an election year, I'd like to lower the tax rate by a lot. But you know what? It's more important to me to be fiscally conservative and do what's best for this township. And as it stands right now, I don't have the exact facts or figures right here. We rate up 566 towns in New Jersey as having between 5 and 10 percent of the lowest tax rate. And I just think that's a pretty incredible thing to do. And Tim, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here. Um, we've had discussions internally about three ways to go. We could keep the tax rate flat, we could increase it just a little bit, or as Mr. Arvanese suggested, we could decrease it a little bit. Um, and we had toyed with the possibility of even increasing it just a little bit. And can you just review that philosophy? Certainly, it's we are we are always seeing you know, increases every year that we, we need to address, and then that's our employee costs, our operating costs, our capital improvement costs, statutory expenses. Um, I've always been on thought that if you go up a little bit, it makes it a little bit easier every year to keeping that tax rate. Well, one of my concerns is when you decrease is you decrease for that year but again you have to make up that decrease for future years because it's not your new base so that is you know one of my concerns so certainly we've been you know, certainly very very fortunate um, in the last few years where we, we have new rateables coming in uh, the conservative fiscal policies were not you know, with our employees, even though you know we may have a, a thirty-five million dollar budget, we're not spending thirty-five million dollars. Um, we are, you know, only spending you know what we need. You know, we may stay on top of our department heads and everything else. And so, although there may be money in the budget, certainly as we're getting towards the year end, it doesn't become a spending spree. Uh, that's you know we put in safeguards for that already. So, um, you know, looking at that is to 
just because you have money in your budget doesn't give you the authority to, to spend it at will. You have to justify every single penny. And that certainly comes back, you know, with Fran and our finance department, our purchasing department, and then you know, more importantly, when you know the bills come to you, like tonight you brought me one bill, so, you know, this this doesn't make sense. You know, why are we being charged? It's a small amount of money, but again everything goes into that pot. But I I've always been kind of looking at you raise it a tiny bit. I don't think if it goes up twenty dollars that our residents are going to be upset because of what we provide to them. So on the average home it goes up twenty, twenty five dollars. Um, they're not going to be screaming up and down that we are we are raising taxes. Um, I think on the other hand, most residents don't realize the difference between the municipal and the state and the, and the county and the open space and the library. They get their tax bill, and this year it's ten thousand one hundred, and next year it's ten thousand two hundred, and that hundred dollars is the school district, but it's more so over the big guys. Um, and they kind of look at that. Like my more statue raised my taxes again a hundred dollars. More statue didn't raise your taxes. More statue gave the municipal taxes flat. <coughs> However, your taxes were raised because of the, the school district. So we own it because we send out the bills. Mm -hmm. um, I'm probably digressing a little bit, um, but. Uh, that's you know kind of my thought. It, 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 a little bit it just kind of protects you, um, and it doesn't really have a, in my opinion, uh, an awful impact when a resident is paying ten thousand dollars in property tax to go up twenty dollars um, mm -hmm. for the services um, and what the, the tax provides to our residents. Right. And you said we, our budget is thirty-six million dollars. We don't spend all of it. And that money still belongs to our taxpayers. It's right. It okay. just it sits in the right. bank and belongs to them. Right. But again, as Mr. Arvanese pointed to it, that what we don't spend is eventually after one year, it's going to roll back into the fund balance. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not like we didn't spend it; we just put it in the bank. It will roll back into the into the fund balance, and that we look at for that that fund balance. So you know, part of that increase in fund balance is also making sure that. No, we only spend what we need to. Right. But the point is that that money still belongs to the taxpayers. It's not. It's not disappearing. It's just rolling over from year to year. Right. And it still belongs to everybody. <laughs> if they still live here, that's correct. Right. And you could, you could, you could municipality shop, I guess, if you want to call it municipality shopping, and move every two years to a place that's saving money versus or, or shop to a place that's that's giving money back versus a town that's saving money for a rainy day. You could do that. And so it is two, two different ways of looking at it. I will, uh, I will say, last year I have argued to lower taxes, and I did lower them last year. And you still replenished our surplus, and then added 1.2 million on top of it, with the tax cut. So last year's example is proof that what I'm presenting to this township committee that we can do it again, and we will still replenish our surplus. There's no reason why I would present something to this municipality. As you can tell, I have a passion for municipal budgeting. And numbers. There's no reason why I live here, too. There's no reason why I would present, present a budget that would handcuff our <coughs> residents, that would make us look bad, and put the township in a position where we're not AAA rated, that we're not one of the lowest tax tax rate municipalities in the state, you know, we got elected to do what's best for our residents, and that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm not saying that you're not, because what you're representing, presenting is not wrong. I just think that providing tax relief to our residents when we can, as I mentioned in the last <coughs> meeting, good government lowers taxes when it can. We can lower taxes, and it will not hurt us today, and it will not hurt us in the future. But it will hurt us in the future because we won't have we won't have the money. Year, we didn't get hurt. Correct. But if we want to do a big capital program, yeah, we have to go out to borrow it as opposed to having more money on hand to do something special. We have more than enough to do what we need to do. So I would just just add one other thing is because it's it is a very difficult question to answer. You know how much fund balance? But what's the right number? And that's that's actually a question we get often. Well, what's what should my fund balance, what should it be? And it really isn't an answer. It, it, it comes down to philosophy. Uh, there's really no wrong 
really wrong answer in it. It comes down to comfort. Um, what I would say is that, you know, as, as, you know, as auditors, you know, we, we are statutorily required to sign the budget. Uh, you know, and what that means is that we've, we've made sure it foots, balances, and is in the form of content uh, that's prescribed by the Division of Welcome Services. Uh, that's not us giving an opinion whether it's a good budget or bad budget. Uh, but certainly, you know, through that review of the budget, we don't just obviously just make sure it foots. We, we do look at it, we do review it, we do evaluate it. Uh, you know, and then as, as we look at strong, you know, well-run, fiscally managed, Towns, we look for certain things. Um, you know, what's the tax rate look like? You know, are there lots of spikes, are there lots of increases, is it flat? You know, and yours has been largely flat for a long you know, period of time. You know, how, how about the debt load? Is, is, is the debt load continuing to rise? You know, that, that would be a, a source of fiscal uh, distress potentially, or, you know, really just burdening, you know, and taking on finance costs they don't need, or, uh, but you know, your debt's going down. You know, over a six-year period, by almost nine percent. Um, you know, you look at you know, we say, hey, if you do a pay as you go, you know, that's a fantastic thing to look at. You know, because you're not incurring finance costs. Um, you know, and when you bond things and you spread them out over 20 years, obviously there's a big you know compounding of interest, um, and, and and that's what you're doing. You're 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 you're, you're paying as you go for a lot of capital improvements. Not all of them, obviously. You, know, you have a policy, and that's one of the things we look for. What's your policy on that? You know, having a policy that says I'm not going to issue more uh, that I'm going to retire is, is, is a sound policy. That's something we look for. Uh, you know, from a fund balance perspective, you know, Mr. Quinn presented 15 to 20 percent. That's not just a you know a made up range that, that I think that he thought was was good. You know, the Government Finance Office Association I think recommends around 17 percent. You know, so it's it's right within that range and. and and, um, and you know, the, other, the other thing that we look for is, you know, are you using more fund balance in your budget than you've generated? And, and, and you know, what you did again in your budget is that you're utilizing fund balance, you, you generated more fund balance this year, you're utilizing, but you're not utilizing more than you generated. And again, that's another indicator of fiscal uh, prudence and strength. So unfortunately, there's no you know, long way, when, when the way to say it. there's no real answer to say, well, what's my number? Becomes, you know, becomes a collective feeling and comfort of what that number is. And uh, eventually, as time goes on, you, you may all change your mind in a year or two, where maybe the fund balance continues to increase. You know, maybe certain revenues come in uh, that were, 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 were unexpected. Um, so you know, it's a healthy discussion. You know, but you know, when we look at the budget, and again, we're not giving an opinion on it. Um, you know, it, it's a budget that you know, a, you know, well run municipality. It, 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 that's the way it looks. It, it's it's you know, a fiscally conservative, um, but it's 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 a well it's a well constructed budget that checks a lot of boxes of you know, uh, organizations that are well run. And as you do other audits, uh, do other municipalities have uh, fund 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 balance policies, and are they in the range that that we're in? They're, they're getting more and more prevalent. Uh, a lot of times, what the, the bonding agencies, um, you know, for, for towns that issue a lot of debt, uh, a lot of things they're looking for is a debt policy and a, and a fund balance policy. That's more than just, you know, something sketched out on a piece of paper. Something that, that's actually being followed uh, on an annual basis. Uh, so, fund balance policies that aren't necessarily as formalized as, as what was been presented. Uh, but like I mentioned, the, you know, the GFOA uh, would recommend around 17 percent, and that's kind of you know, they're, they're, the, they're the national organization uh, for the United States and Canada for municipal finance officials, mm -hmm. um, and that, that's right within that range. Right. And just to, one other point about a fund fund, fund balance policy is it's it's a percentage of your budget is the number amount you want to have in your fund balance, and yeah. budgets only go up, costs are going up. There's, there's no stop in that. You know, there's health care costs, you know, the pension costs, salary costs, everybody gets a 2% increase. So that fund balance is going to have to go up every year if we have that fund balance policy in place to keep it at a stable rate. And so we have to, we have to feed that fund balance over the years. It, or and we have to, we have, we're going to have to generate the excess to feed that fund balance policy. Or we may find that it increases at a rate that 
you know, outpaces your policy. Mm -hmm. And then maybe it becomes a little clearer as to what you want to do going forward. Mm -hmm. But to your point, as far as uncertainty, you know, clearly, you know, the biggest dynamic that's out there is the uncertainty over the state budget. Okay. You know, unfunded pension liabilities are not going down. Unfunded retiree health care costs uh, are not even basically funded. And at least the pension has some money pledged towards it, whereas retiree health care costs do not. Uh, that services up. You know, you name it, state costs are going up. At some point, they are going to have to look at state aid. You know, they've done it with, you know, the problem becomes with, you know, you can do a great job managing your budget. The state doesn't. And when the state has to make a right turn, they make it very quick without any consideration to anyone else. So in any given year, if they need to make something uh, work on their end, they're not going to worry about your fiscal planning. You're going to have to absorb it very quick. You know, point of is an example, school district aid. Um, you know, the, the, the state aid form has changed this past you know, July where they've said, you know, certain districts are underfunded, certain districts are funded. Well, those districts that were quote unquote overfunded are now uh, having a rapid decline in aid, far rap more rapid than they can then adjust their budgets for, mm -hmm. which is resulting in, you know, talks of significant layoffs. It's only in year two, um, but, you know, I know my town, but it's talk of, of significant layoffs because you can't raise taxes enough to counteract the state aid uh, losses. That's just an example of, again, if something changes on the state end, they don't have a lot of uh, courtesy for everyone else to make sure that you're okay and, and can absorb that. Uh, so certainly that's, that, that's something to be concerned about. Thank you. Any other comments? Mark, any comments? Kathy? I would just say that what you just said is my number one reservation about, it's, your, um, it's your number one reservation. I, 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 I thank Mr. Arvanides for bringing this up. It's a really good discussion. It's thought provoking. Um, my reservation is that I don't trust the state. They're, they're not in good shape, and who knows what could happen? There's a lot of uncertainty there. With, re with respect to the comments that were just made, if something if, we, if our state aid got cut in half, are we in a position that we can absorb it and still keep functioning and be in good shape still? If our state aid went down a million dollars, we would still be comfortable, correct? But instead of having 12 million I mean, I surplus, could, uh, we'll have a lot yeah, back. I, I, I okay. so, but what, what, what if you add to that health and um, pension, pension? costs and all that, you, you could get a pile on. Yeah, but then we can say, what if you know, all the new developments come in and you get the rentables for that, and what if all the pilot program money comes in for the next 30 years? There's the what ifs on the other side, too. That's true. So if you lose a million dollars in state aid, in year two, you've lost $2 million in state aid in Lord. You've lost it every year. Absolutely. It's, and it's gone further. I can never see them raising that number back up. Anyway, that's why we have stagnant. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Great discussion, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. And, uh, and, and to John, to your point, there there is going to be additional revenues coming in next year. So we have, you know, the Honeywell properties coming online. How, you know, about two thirds of them are online, but still have one third to go. We have uh, they broke ground at Colgate, um, Palm Isle, the old facility on Hanover Avenue. Those will be coming in. I I agree. And when that money starts to show, uh, you know, I think we'll have more flexibility. But at this point in time, I'm a conservative budgeter. I do it at home. I like to have a nice, healthy, rainy day fund if my roof starts leaking or anything like that. And I know you think that we have enough. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable at the rate that we have in the, in the current budget. And I know it's just different philosophies, and I, I respect what you're saying and I understand it. And I, I, and I am comfortable too, so I'm not saying to lower where we're at. I'm just saying to not increase it as fast as it's been increasing. Mm -hmm. that's, all, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. So I, I'm not spending any more money, I'm not using any more money. Just, but, if you, but if you don't take it in this year, you won't have it in future years. And so 
in the future years when we do have that excess money, we can have a, a conversation about, I think, lowering the tax rate. Okay. My, my last comment, if I could, mm -hmm. and then I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, 10 o'clock was my limit, so we're almost there. Okay, I'm sorry. So I ran for township committee um, uh, position on being a leader and not necessarily being a follower and following uh, budgets from past administrations. And I, I always try to look ahead and become creative in how I budget and come up with recommendations on how to tax our residents. Uh, today, we here on the Township Committee can all be leaders, not necessarily follow the models of, of uh, budgets from the past. Uh, and what we can do today is also put a, an end to the subterfuge that I believe has been going on for years and pass a budget that pro provides necessary necessary tax relief. Because the revenues and the expenses are not reflected accurately when we're presenting these budgets. Now, there's always room for ups and downs, and I think we can do a better job at sharpening our pencil to reflect the revenue and the expenses more accurately to help to provide the necessary, necessary tax relief. So, my budget not only pays for all of the services that we're accustomed to, it also puts money away for the future. Last year, we did that, and we had progress by providing that necessary, necessary tax relief to all of our residents, but especially the seniors who are on fixed income. Today, we need to provide more tax relief. As I mentioned earlier, good government lowers taxes when it can, and we can. So today we can lower taxes. Today we need to be leaders. Today we need to do what's right for all of our residents and present a budget that is more fair in the taxation to our residents. And I feel that a yes vote to the introduction of this budget tonight is a, tax, is a, is a vote for a tax increase. Well, it would seem to me, sir, and I agree with your philosophy, and I think your, your thought process has been very good today. But the situation being, that for us to vote, if we do vote for a flat tax, I think that's a great leadership situation. We are doing what's good for Morris Township for our 24,000 residents. It would be so easy to say, let's cut taxes by 200 or $300. But you know what? I think it's fiscal, fiscally sound and prudent to do what I think, I hope we're going to do tonight. And I thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I have no further comments myself either. So, do we I have a make a motion to? Uh, you're ready. I have a resolution, and after I get the resolution read, I would ask that Mr. Emilio um, call roll call. And but at what point? What at what point do we uh, have public commentary? Oh, I'm questioning. I think we forgot that. Yes. So does that come now, or do we make the introduction, get a second? To get it on the table yeah, and then have public the commentary. Final consideration and adoption of the budget. Right. 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 If you want to have public commentary, do it now. I mean, part of the do it now before the yeah. before the first mm -hmm. and the second. Yes. Okay. So we'll open it up now. Um, Mark, you want to straighten out the? Should we turn on the lights? Okay. Does anybody have? Uh, well, we're going to open it up for public comment here. Uh, questioning. Anybody in the public have a question or comment? Yeah. I know we've thinned out the audience a little bit by talking so long. Everybody go. Excuse me. You turn out the lights and everybody left. Clear the room, Tim. You like that monotone? No. The word of prayer, you may be here to start. Actually, how about how about Maybe that's right? Come on up, Mr. O'Reilly. Mr. O'Reilly. We're waiting all night for you. You've got, you've got my favorite part of the meeting. Uh, no, do I need to give my name? <laughs> Three people over here. Tom Riley, 50 Independence Way. Uh, a minor question or two. Uh, one was that uh, it's not fully blockage. Uh, 1.38 million. Is it 1.83 million for the library? 1.83. Does the library assess that tax and we just collect it? Correct. Uh, so that's why it's a pass through. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have nothing to do with that. Okay. And uh, 
the blank. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Robinson. Robinson. While you were discussing the budget, it might be a budgetary question. If you want to rule that it isn't, then I'll pass it later. But there was something about the enlargement of the train station, the, the, the uh, NJ Transit station. And There's nothing in the budget about that. Enlargement? There was a mention, a, a mention somewhere. We're doing it. Uh, I'm, I'm fixing the gutters. I'm fixing the gutters at the, oh, okay. the roof at the station. Sir. The question like really that. was that with regard to the, uh, the property of the, uh, the hotel, Madison Hotel, and the development is proposed there. I heard it stated that it might impinge on the development of the train station. It, would any such development of the train station need more area, need more room or anything? Is there any relation of the one to the other? Well, first of all, that's it's not a budget question. Okay, we're well, talking about budget questions, but since you asked the question, no, it's their private property, so it wouldn't impinge on our parking lot. But, the, but it doesn't affect the, the size of the station development. Wouldn't take more area. And we're not taking any area from the station. Yeah, and, and then also, Mr. O'Reilly, that's I mean that's a project before the board of adjustment, so it's really okay. inappropriate for us to comment on on that development per se. And those questions are probably better asked at the okay. Board of Adjustment. Anyway, thank you for thank answering. You. Um, yeah, thank you. Sue Young, 35 Schoolhouse Lane. The famous okay. Sue Young. Pardon? After tonight, the famous Sue Young. <laughs> uh, I put more money into the kindergarten. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I appreciate all the work that has been done on this budget. It's taken, what, a year plus, um, plus all of the years prior to this to be able to make sure that the budget is, for us, a flat tax. We start again next Thursday for the next year, by the way. Do you? Okay. <laughs> no glass of wine or beer. <laughs> be appropriate. Um, I don't know if, if Mr. Arbonides is running for elect re-election this year? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, I don't believe that uh, reducing my taxes 200 because I'm, quote, paying more than I should. I appreciate all the services that we have in Morris Township. I appreciate that we have a surplus in a fund balance so that if there are any issues and we have probably, who knows what's coming up. Uh, I would rather have that as a rainy day fund than to spend it all, um, as Mr. Abernathy's uh, suggests. So I appreciate just want to let you know. That I, Thank I will ask for a motion, a motion for the resolution or the ordinance first. It's a, it's a resolution. I will. Yeah. I, I, I will. Please read that into the record. Just so that I know there's a bit of contention up here, but requires a majority of the full authorized membership, which means it needs three votes to carry. Mm -hmm. The resolution put forth to the Township Committee be resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Morris, County of Morris, that the budget hearing before set forth is hereby adopted and shall constitute an appropriation for the purposes stated of the sums therein set forth as appropriations in the authorization of the amount of $22,327,716 for municipal purposes, $105,780 and one cent for open space, recreation, farmland, and historic preservation trust fund levy, $1,824,704 for the minimum library tax. And I would ask Mrs. Emilio for a roll call on the adoption of the We need an offer. I'm sorry. I would I'm offer, always skipping ahead. I'm sorry. I would offer the motion or resolution over and really nomenclature of it is at this juncture. And I'll second that. Roll call. No. <laughs> Mr. Turvey. Yes. Mr. Mancusa. Yes. Mrs. Wilson. Yes. Mayor Yes. 